What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to plot professional graphs in the terminal using Python and also how to create interesting animations like the one you can see to my left. So we're going to end up with animations like this one and also with professional graphs like this one, all in the terminal using Python. So let us get right into it. Alright, so we're going to do visualizations, we're going to plot graphs in the terminal today. And for that, we're going to need an external Python library called plot text. So plot text with one T, so not plot text, but plot text. Um, and this is essentially like matplotlib, but for the command line, and it's a very powerful module that you can use if you are limited to a command line, if you don't have graphical user interfaces that you can work with, but you still want to display some data, which can be the case if you have some very basic data science command line application, for example, for Linux, and people that don't have uh, a graphical user interface maybe uh, should still be able to use your application so you can also have command line visualizations. And for that, we're going to open up a command line and we're going to type pip install plot text like that again with one T in the middle. Um, and also we're going to need numpy. So pip install numpy for those of you who don't have numpy installed already. And then we can just import plot text and import numpy SNP. Now regarding the alias in the documentation, they use the alias PLT, which I'm not really comfortable with because PLT is the alias for matplotlib.pyplot. Uh, even though plot text has a very similar um, functionality and very similar function names and parameters and all that, uh, I would still not call it PLT. So I like to use just a full import name. If you want, you can also come up with your own alias like PLTX or something like that. I'm just going to use plot text. Just wanted to mention that in the documentation they use PLT, but I would not recommend doing that because we already have that for matplotlib. Um, so the first thing we want to do here is we want to do a simple scatter plot. We're going to say x is equal to np random random. We're going to generate 100 ran random values and we're going to have y values as well. And in order to plot a simple scatter plot, we do it in the exact same way that we would do that in matplotlib. So we say plot text dot scatter x and y and then plot text dot title random data points and then plot text dot show. And now you can run all of this in a PyCharm command line. And I think for this one, this shouldn't be too much of a problem. There you go. You can see it works, but I would not recommend working with a PyCharm command line here, especially when we get to the uh, animations. So I would always use the actual terminal because the displaying is quite different. So let's open up CMD, navigate to that directory, and then navigate to current in my case, and then just run main.py. And you can see now we have this graph in the command line. You can see this works. Now, of course, if you resize the command line, this is going to cause some problems, but then you can just execute it again. And you can see here we have a basic scatter plot in the command line, which looks actually quite good. So let's go ahead and do something more complicated. First of all, all in, in between all these plottings, we always want to call plot text dot clear plot, or there are a couple of functions. Um, I don't remember exactly what they stand for, but we have CLC, CLF, CLP, CLD. Uh, I think I wrote it down somewhere what they stand for, but I think one was clear figure, clear uh, this and that, you know, the, actually you, you always want to just call the clear functions until your plot is clear. Uh, you can play around with that or you can, or you can look up the documentation, but I like to call the plot text clear plot function after each plot. And the next plot is the sine wave plot that we're going to look at a basic line plot essentially, but we can actually even create the Y values with plot text. So we can say actually Y equals plot text dot sign. And then we can just say plot text dot plot Y and then plot text title sign and then plot text show. And you're going to see that we have a sine wave then. Maybe I should not close the command line all the time. And you can see here we have a basic uh, sine wave. Right. So that's quite simple. We can also do that manually. So we can also go ahead and say um, x equals np arrange 
from uh, 0 to 10 with a step size 0 0.1 and y is just going to be np sine of x. And then I can also say y2 is going to be np cosine of x. And then I can just plot both of them. So PL, uh, plot x, plot um, x and y and plot, it, plot x, plot x, uh, y2. And I can say label equals sign and label equals cosine. And then I can say plot x title sign and cosine and then plot x show. And as far as I remember, this will already give us a legend as well. So you can see here we have cosine and we have sign. You can see that we have a legend up here. Uh, so this works then what we can also do is we can and this is probably the most interesting part here, we can animate a sine wave. This is what you saw in preview. Um, now I'm not sure how this would be done if you do it like that, but it can be done with the built in sine function. And in general, the whole thing supports animation. And I took this what I'm going to show you now from the documentation. So the documentation is actually kind of cool. Um, we're going to say L equals 1000. And x is going to be range. So we're going to generate values range. Uh, n plus uh, one until L plus uh, one like that. So basically, we uh, define the x values based on the length here. And then we say frames is going to be 50. And then we say plot text dot title sign animation plot text dot CLC. And then we can basically say for i in range, and we specify frames as the range here. And after each thing, we say plot text CLT and plot text CLD. And then we say plot text sign, which is the function that we saw before. And we can now say the amplitude is one, the periods is going to be four. Uh, the length is going to be L. And the face is going to be two times I divided by frames. And then we can just plot this with a limit. So we can say x limb is going to be zero to 400. Um, plot text dot plot x and y marker is going to be a dot The color is going to be red. And then we're going to say plot text sleep 0 0.01, then plot text dot show. And then finally plot text clear plot. So as I mentioned, this is from the documentation. This is how you can do a basic animation. Um, again, I ran this now in the PyCharm command line, you can see why you don't want to do that. Um, if I run this now here, you can see that we have a sine wave animation. And of course, this can be used for all sorts of things, but it works the easiest with the inbuilt uh, function of the sign. So this is what you can do here. This is just an extra feature. This is probably not something that you're going to use all the time, because animating uh, sign functions or animating stuff in general is not really something that you do on an everyday basis in the command line. So uh, let's move on to bar charts. Bar charts are also kind of interesting. We can say, for example, something like we have a couple of languages, Python, Java, C, go JavaScript, something like that. And then we have votes, how many people think that this is the best language, and we can have 140 for Python, uh, 48 for Java, 112 for C, 65 for Go and 101 for JavaScript, for example. And then we can say plot x title bar chart plot x bar and then essentially just languages and votes plot x show. And this already creates for us a beautiful bar chart with the respective labels. So this is kind of cool. Um, this can also be kind of useful. Now what we can also do here is uh, we can add another list and say, okay, we have um, male votes and female votes and we can then um, plot a list. So we can remove the votes here, we can say male votes equals and then I don't know, 10, 20, 10, 40, 20, 15. 
Now I have six values, but five languages. This is not good. So let's get rid of the 20 here. And then the female votes are, I don't know, 15, 5, 15, 20, 30 or something like that. And now I can go ahead and say here uh, languages, but then also male votes and female votes as a list. And the label is going to be then a list of male and female. So this works as well. Uh, no, we have a problem. What's the problem? Uh, yeah, the problem is, of course, that we have to use the multiple bar function, not the bar function, because that then gives us multiple bars uh, with different colors. So you can see here Python, female, male, Java, female, male, and so on. This is kind of cool. Of course, we can also set the colors and all that uh, the way you do it in MatPublib, essentially. But this is kind of cool because with very few lines of code, we can create multiple uh, a bar chart with multiple parts uh, bars in the command line. Then we can also take a look at histograms. For example, we might have different categories of people that have a different age distribution and we want to plot multiple histograms into the same graph or multiple graphs into the same uh, plot. And for that, for example, we can say student underscore ages is going to be NP random normal. And we can say, okay, the mean of a student age is something like 14 with a standard deviation of five. Uh, we want to have a hundred values. Then we can say worker ages NP random normal. And here we can say the average wor worker is 40 years old with 20 years standard deviation, a hundred values. And then we want to have, um, guru ages, I don't know, usually old people. Uh, I'm not talking about fake gurus, I'm talking about spiritual gurus, we can say, okay, the average age, there is 80 with a standard deviation of 10. Um, when I have 100 values here, and now we can plot a histogram or multiple histograms using plot text, we just have to say uh, plot text dot hist. And we say student ages bins is going to be I don't know, let's go with 40. And worker ages, guru ages, and then just plot text dot show. And again, run this, and you can see all these uh, histograms. Now, of course, we don't have labels, I'm not sure if we can add labels here, label equals student, label equals worker, label equals guru. Not sure if that works. There you go, it works. So now we know that the blue ones are the students, the green ones are the workers and the red ones are the gurus. Um, this is how you can do that. Now one thing that you probably want to also to do, uh, which you can do in MatPlotLib is you want to create subplots, so you want to have multiple plots, um, uh, m multiple plots inside of one plot. So you want to have a two by two grid, for example. And how you can do that is exactly the same way you, that you do that in matplotlib, you type plot text dot subplots, and you define it, you want to have a two by two grid, and then you say plot text dot subplot. And then you type, for example, one one to get the upper left one. And you type plot text title uh, one, for example, and then plot text dot uh, scatter and then you can say np random random 100 np random random 100 and then you can copy this here and say okay now I want to have one two and I can call this here two and then I can plot the same thing here and let's just copy this a couple of times you can then still change those, right? So we can say here two one, we can call this three. And then we can say two two, which is the bottom right, and we can call this four. And essentially, we plot all these. And in the end, we say just plot text show. And this then looks like that. So in this case, we have uh, the same principle of uh, just having random numbers, random values scatter plotted. But of course, you can you can go ahead and then use the examples that we had before. So let's maybe just so you see how that works, we can also go ahead and say, um, again, languages, langs, Python, 
Java C and then votes 10, 20, 30, even though that is very unrealistic that Python has the lowest votes. Um, then we can say here bar langs votes. And then we would have that in the second one. So in the, in the top right here, and you can fill that up with different graphs. And then you can you can have professional combinations of graphs and overviews and whatever. Uh, you can have a finance dashboard if you want to. Uh, yeah. So this brings us to the last example, the finance idea. So we can, for example, have a simple command line finance application for that. We're going to have to install uh, a module called pandas data reader, which I have used in a couple of videos already. Uh, so you can go to the command line. If you want to also do that example, you don't have to, uh, you can type pip install pandas dash data reader like that. And then you can import the pandas data reader as web and you can import datetime as DT, which is a core Python module, which actually means that we should import it at the top here if we stick to the conventions. And then what we want to do is we want to say, okay, um, give me some stock data, say the start date is DT datetime uh, dot, do we do it like that? DT datetime, and then we pass 2018-1-1, for example, and this DT date time now. And what we want to do is we want to get some Apple data. So I want to say Apple data is going to be web dot data reader, get the Apple ticker symbol from the Yahoo Finance API from start to end. And in particular, we want to get the dates. So this is kind of interesting of an example, because we need to take the um, the dates and we need to convert them to something that plot text can actually render on the x axis or use on the x axis and then we can plot the stock, uh, the stock price. So what we can do here is we can say dates equals and we can use a list comprehension, we can say plot text dot date time dot date time to string x for x in Apple data dot index because the index of the data that we get from the Yahoo Finance API is the date of the individual price that we're looking at on, of the row. Um, so we have the dates now and then we can go ahead and actually we don't have to clear the plot because we don't have any plots before that. Um, but we can say now plot text dot plot date. And we say dates is the x value. And as the y value want to have a list of Apple data dot, uh, or not dot, we can do it like that close value. Uh, the reason we typecast this into a list because this is, uh, or is because this is uh, a panda series. So we want to take that turn it into a list and we have the dates and then the closing prices, we can also go for the adjusted close price actually adjusted to stock splits. And then we can just say plot text x label date, y label, price and plot text show. Now, of course, I closed my command line. So we need to go to the directory again. But once the data is loaded, you can see that we have the stock price of the Apple stock here with the dates at the bottom. So this is how you can create professional visualizations, animations and graphs in the terminal using Python and using plot text. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and 